Hi guys, I thought I'd try something a little bit new this time and try and actually uh, do some video. I've had this idea of doing some sort of weekly roundup video, uh, whether I can keep this regular cadence up or not, I don't know. But I thought this would be a good week to do it. I planned it anyway, and then the whole Yahoo stuff happened and I've kind of spent all day answering questions that would take me a long time to write. So I thought I'd talk about some of them here, as well as a few other things that are going on. I did a, a podcast with a, a mate of mine, John Sonmez, earlier on this week, and he was talking about how much he does these these sort of YouTube videos, and he pumps out multiple videos a day, which is which is kind of a lot, but he said it works really well, and uh, apparently video on YouTube is a good way of, of communicating, um, strange as it may seem. So I thought I'd give this a little bit of a run, and look, we'll see how this goes. If you like this and it works well, I'll try and do more of this because it's sort of low overhead compared to uh, sitting down writing long blog posts. Uh, if you don't like it and it's crap, well, tell me that as well and I'll stop doing it if enough people say it's crap. Anyway, uh, so a few different things. I thought I'd, I'd cover some of the stuff that's kind of topical, some of the things I'm up to and try and keep the whole lot within, you know, 10 minutes-ish thereabouts. And obviously the, the thing that's kind of gone crazy uh, in the last just under 24 hours is Yahoo. And there's been this Yahoo data breach. And there's been a bit of talk about Yahoo data breach uh, going back a couple of months now. And one of these sort of dark web sellers uh, called Peace popped up on this Real Deal dark web forum last month. And they were selling something like 200 million Yahoo accounts. And everyone went, well, this is going to be real, right? This is going to be the Yahoo data breach because Peace has form. Peace was selling uh, LinkedIn for a few Bitcoin. Uh, he or she or whoever it was, uh, was involved in some of the other big breaches that were being sold online. So it had a good track record. And anyway, Peace has popped up and then the whole thing's just gone dead. Like it lasted in the news for a day, nothing more, you know, no more news. And then just yesterday, we started hearing all this stuff about Yahoo's going to make an announcement about 200 million accounts, which wasn't quite correct because it turned out to be more like half a billion accounts, which is quite a lot. And uh, dating back to 2014, what's kind of interesting with this is that Yahoo has said, uh, yep, uh, half a billion accounts, 2014, state-sponsored. And state-sponsored is kind of interesting because we're, we're talking now about uh, a nation state who has actively, from the highest echelons of government, ev evidently, if it's a nation state-sponsored attack, uh, has consciously mounted this uh, against, um, against a US company, which makes it kind of interesting and there's a couple of things here. So one of them is like, why? So why does a nation state do this? And there's, there's a few different reasons. We've seen um, probably that the one that sort of is most fresh in people's minds is the, the Sony Pictures hack a couple of years ago. Democratic Republic of North Korea, uh, they didn't like the movie that Sony was creating. Now that, is, that is allegedly why they hacked them. So that was that. A little bit odd though, and I think what the Yahoo incident is probably more akin to, keeping in mind that Yahoo is still a really big email provider. It's okay, it's fallen from grace a bit, but a lot of people have Yahoo accounts. So think back to sort of 2011 and, and DigiNotar era, this Dutch certificate authority, which uh, was compromised by the Iranian government because the Iranian government wanted to go and do things like issue wildcard certificates for Google domains so that they could get in the middle of Gmail traffic. Uh, another one just before that, so Tunisian government and Facebook, Tunisian government man in the middle of the Facebook login page, which was served over HTTP and they dropped key loggers in there so that they could get the credentials of Tunisian uh, citizens. So that the nation state sort of thing kind of makes sense from the perspective of it is the sort of asset which is of interest to a nation state. It's the sort of asset that is of interest to a nation state that can't make lawful requests uh, to Yahoo. So if it was Australia, UK, somewhere like that, we have legal constructs to say, look, there's suspicion about the activities uh, of an individual. They can go and get court orders and access to data. If you were a nation state uh, more like the other two I just mentioned, and you went to Yahoo and said, we want data because we don't like someone talking freely about something we disagree with, maybe you're not going to get your data. So that's sort of, that's the way it's playing out. So we've had uh, Yahoo say, look, it's, it's nation state. I had a chat today with uh, sources close to Yahoo, uh, apparently is the, the right way to put this. And they had some interesting things to say. One of the things I was a bit curious about is the password storage. 
because the press release from Yahoo says uh, we've got the vast majority of passwords uh, in Bcrypt and some minority of passwords not in Bcrypt. And inevitably what's happened here is Yahoo has gone through this password hashing upgrade process where at some point in time, and evidently, well, evidently before the 2014 event, they've said uh, our old algorithm, and I don't know what it is, but say for argument's sake, salted SHA-1, uh, not so good, we're going to upgrade everyone. And this is a process which has taken some time and it clearly hasn't completed before the data was actually compromised. And we, we saw something a little bit similar to this with Dropbox. So Dropbox was only a couple of weeks ago and about half of Dropbox uh, was SHA-1, which was terrible, and half of Dropbox was Bcrypt. So I think there's sort of an, an interesting thing here in terms of the way organizations uh, do their hashing algorithm upgrade and leaving windows of risk between when they decide to do the rollover and they begin it and when it's complete. So there's probably something to be said here for just hashing the old stuff with the new hashing algorithm as dirty as that feels, but it does actually get all of your things moved over pretty quickly. I don't think we're going to see the data from Yahoo publicly if it is what Yahoo says it is. So if it is state-sponsored, uh, state uh, actors of that nature who want to intercept citizens' private communications don't tend to go and put it on pastebin. Uh, that's quite a different class of actor that does that. So I'd be very surprised if it pops up. I have already had people saying, yeah, I got the Yahoo data or, or a mate's got it or a guy at the pub has seen it or you know, like the usual stuff that will happen. It's very unlikely we're going to see it unless it turns out to be something other than what Yahoo has represented that it is. So that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. That's Yahoo, very early days. Look, we'll see how that pans out. The other one that's um, consumed a bit of my time the last week is this uh, Regpack data breach. So this is, uh, well, we can't say data breach, which is the first thing they've said. It's not a data breach. We just accidentally published several hundred thousand transactions with partial card data and CVVs somewhere publicly, uh, but it is not a hack. So this was where I originally thought it might have been from BlueSnap. So someone said it is from BlueSnap, who is a payment processor. Regpack is kind of upstream of them towards the customer because they have registration forms and they do, uh, or rather they take payments. And there are all these other websites that used Regpack who some at some point exposed the data publicly and then the data get down to BlueSnap uh, for credit card processing. So that, look, it's just been kind of weird the way that's panned out because it was a couple of months between when a leak of this data was tweeted publicly and we actually got to the bottom of it. And initially Regpack said, no, nope, not from us. BlueSnap said it wasn't from them uh, as well. Uh, BlueSnap was right, Regpack wasn't right. There's a whole heap of data there. Regpack has to communicate it to all of the sites that used them. And then all of those sites have to then communicate it to all of their customers. And eventually, in theory, everyone will get notified that their data was made uh, rather public. The CVV thing is kind of odd because uh, they were actually CVV codes. There was a denial early on that it was CVV codes. Uh, they were CVVs, uh, I know, because I asked people who were in the data breach that were subscribers of Have I Been Pwned, and they went, um, yeah, that's my CVV. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be there. And there's a lot of discussion about whether or not you're allowed to store CVV, because PCI says, no, nah, can't store it under any circumstances, can't encrypt it, can't install part of it or anything like that. You just can't have it but there are valid use cases where you need it. Someone gave me one recently where they said, look, you, you go to the concierge at the hotel and the concierge is gonna book things on your behalf and they may need your card data to be able to do that. I think that's a little bit of an edge case. What we do know is that you shouldn't store hundreds of thousands of them and then put them unencrypted on a publicly facing website and let someone download them uh, and then deny it happened until you realize it did happen. So interesting one there, and just another sort of good example of even when a company says they weren't hacked, doesn't mean they weren't hacked. They just sometimes need a bit of prompting. So that was that one. The, the other one that's happened in the last uh, few days is I got my hands on the last FM data breach, 37 uh, million unique records there. Uh, there was about 40 something rows in total. Once I actually get all the email addresses, get a distinct set of them, it boils down a little bit. Loaded those into Have I Been Pwned. Uh, I'm getting good at loading data breaches that are tens of millions of records now. 
loaded all those in, it sent uh, over 100,000 email notifications to subscribers. So the, I guess the thing here is I'm finding that the volume of emails it needs to send uh, is obviously getting very large, not just because there's large data breaches, but I'm approaching three quarters of a million uh, subscribers now as well. So the intersection of have I been paying subscribers with people in the data breach is just getting bigger and bigger. So there was that. I've also uh, been under a, a barrage of traffic. I'm a little bit reticent to say attack because I don't think it's quite sophisticated enough to be an attack. But I've been seeing uh, up to about 68 million hits in 24 hours, which uh, fortunately is, is pretty much all going to Cloudflare. And part of the reason it's all going to Cloudflare now is that I wrangled up a little feature using uh, Azure Functions. So what Azure can do is uh, look for things like a, a message in a storage queue. So what I'm doing now is when I see abuse on the web app, I drop the IP address in a storage queue, the Azure function picks it up, it's a couple of dozen lines, the whole thing's on the blog, picks it up, uh, goes to the API on Cloudflare and says, uh, challenge this IP address with a JavaScript challenge page next time they come to the site. So they get this sort of interstitial page which runs JavaScript, makes sure it's a legit browser, if it's good, they go through. If not, it gets blocked. That is working awesomely. I'm so happy with how easy it was to do the Azure function, uh, how easy it was also for Cloudflare to stand up that API and just chuck data into there. So that was pretty cool. I'll link to all this stuff on the blog post I'll do that goes with this video as well. So hopefully, uh, if you do want to look at any more info, it will all be there. So look, uh, last thing, because I want to try and keep these deliberately short so that people can kind of listen to them without getting too bored, is uh, I've got a heap of travel coming up. Uh, if people want to catch up with me, I've got a little event here uh, in Australia on the Gold Coast uh, next week, which is iPad Loser, which will be different to my normal audience. Uh, and then I'm back in Europe again. So I've got uh, workshops in London in the week of Monday, uh, the 3rd of October, which are private. I'm speaking at Scottsoft in Edinburgh on Thursday the 6th. So if you're in Scotland, I'll be there. I'll be doing workshops in Glasgow, then off to Denmark. Uh, if you are around Copenhagen, I'm doing a workshop which is actually sold out, so that won't work too well. But I believe I'm doing a talk as well uh, on Tuesday 11, so if you're in Copenhagen, hopefully that'll work. Back to London. I do have tickets available for my London workshop, which is Thursday 13th and Friday 14th of uh, October. Not sold out yet, we've, uh, we've sold out, I think every one uh, pretty much this year that I've done uh, publicly, so I'm hoping that one sells out as well. So come along to that if you've got time. Uh, then I'll be in Switzerland uh, doing some workshops in Zurich and speaking at Swiss Cyberstorm, uh, which is a, a rather awesome sounding name. That's Wednesday 19. And finally, I'm doing one more talk for the Wide Security Conference in London on Thursday 20. Uh, and then I'm coming home and not going anywhere for quite a while. So look, uh, that's what's happening. I hope this is kind of useful. Let me know if these videos are worthwhile uh, or if they're, they're something that I shouldn't bother with. It's going to be interesting if I try and do them while I'm traveling, but maybe it will actually be more interesting. I don't know. I hope it's been good and hopefully it gives you a little bit more insight, uh, particularly into that Yahoo incident. Thanks, guys.